mechanical adjustments for your filler, start with the gate. The gate here is mounted and has a pin here that stops your cans in the proper position, which is centered with the fill head in the can. If you need to make adjustments on the position at which it stops, what you'll do is loosen the nut on the bottom side of the gate, which will allow you to rotate where the pin is in relationship to the conveyor. You also have in and out adjustment on that bracket. Once you find the place that allows the can to stop in the proper position, tighten that nut down and ensure that it hasn't moved. Once you've set this in relationship to your front fill head, you can backload cans and adjust the positioning of your fill heads and pre-purge heads on the rail for the diameter of the can. To make this adjustment, you'll simply loosen the fill heads on each side as they're tied together and slide them on the rail to the proper position and then tighten the bolts back down. As you can see, we have this reversed here from what you're seeing inside of the filler. Concept doesn't change. This is your pre-purge or what's often referred to as can purge on the touchscreen. Uh, and then we also have, if you look, another purge tube in the fill head itself, which can explained previously. And uh, to my knowledge, we're the only canning line in the industry that has both the pre-purge and the fill purge. And the result of that obviously is some of the lowest, if not the lowest DO pickup performance in the industry. So I wanted to point that out and then Cam can uh, show us the, some height adjustments if you wanna go ahead and demonstrate that on both fill tubes, fill probes, and finally the fill purge tube. So to adjust your fill tube, you'll first lower the, the fill head down into the can. Uh, once you have that, you can adjust by loosening these thumb screws and you can adjust the height of the tube itself. The gap that you're looking for is an eighth of an inch from the bottom of this tube to the inside of the bottom of the can. So you should only be able to lift that can an eighth of an inch to come up and contact the bottom of the tube. That's through trial and error. Uh, years ago, we found that to be the most laminar flow um, and gave us uh, the most control over foam and, and some of those things. So if your tubes are too low or too high, you're gonna receive a lot more breakout than you're looking for and thus low fills. So if it's too low, it's like putting your thumb over a garden hose where you're creating a little bit too much velocity coming through a small orifice. If you're too high, it has too much velocity hitting the bottom of the can. The next adjustment you have is the height of your level probe. So if your level probe is too high, then you'll run out of adjustment or completely miss the liquid level in the can and it'll just sit there and spill and won't ever stop the fill. What you wanna do is set this a little bit lower than you actually want your liquid level. That way it has time to delay before the shutoff. Setting this too low is better than setting it too high. Then the final adjustment we have is on the back side of your fill head which is the height of this tube in relationship to the bottom of your fill tubes. You want roughly a quarter inch or quarter to half inch, basically as low as you can get with this tube in your adjustment. You'd loosen the set screw, set it, tighten down. And you'll notice the thumb screws for convenience, to, uh, just toolless adjustments, um, speed, efficiency, yeah, what else, Cam? Uh, flow? Uh, you have flow controls for the speed of your pinch. If you pinch these slower, you'll actually get more breakout because you are shoving it, that liquid through a smaller orifice for a split second if it's slow. If it's fast, it's a, a lower foam situation. So if you needed to create foam in, say, a lower carbonated beverage, you can slow the speed at which it closes and opens to create a little bit of breakout to reduce DO.